following in the footsteps of their rival, Activision, Nintendo has made the decision to release Fire Emblem DLC with a price tag heftier than the actual game itself. Fire Emblem Echoes Shadow of Valencia is scheduled to be released in late May of 2017 alongside a gargantuan pile of DLC which can be purchased individually or cumulatively via a season pass. This has fans of the series angered, believing Nintendo is steadily adopting unpopular business strategies of their competitors. And frankly, the only thing I can say to that is that I completely agree. To me, it seems so... so un-Nintendo-like and so Activision-like to release this <laughs> pile of DLC that costs more than the actual game and to be honest it's actually quite disconcerting i don't have much positive to say here because to me it seems as though nintendo is capitulating to that sort of business strategy which is purchase the game but the game is only a starting pad to really get the full game experience you're going to have to spend more money to you know get the full experience and that is very very disconcerting i'm obviously that, not that's gonna... antithetical to what most of nintendo is all about right like most of their history has been no we believe that you should have the full package when you buy the game but now it seems they might be slipping in, a, in another direction indeed and this also comes on the heels of the in the last direct we were informed of the game that now both fish champ and myself play and we, we, we enjoy it uh, but they released a new kirby game called kirby team Cra uh, clash deluxe and that game also features the marketing strategy of it's free to play but in order to get the full experience you have to spend money right now i am actually fine with supporting that game because i think it's a really fun game and i think that you know that they could have easily charged 15 dollars for that game and it still would have been a worthy title so i'm willing mm -hmm. to spend 15 dollars to you know get some experience out of it and that's fine by me the problem is though is that that coupled with this Fire Emblem news that we're just hearing, it, it does suggest in a very concerning way that Nintendo is now sort of devolving into its competitors as if to say our, you know, our emblem of uniqueness, and you'll excuse the pun, is is no longer existent, right? We're getting rid of that. We're putting yeah. that aside and we're going to partake in these, you know, these very tenuous business strategies yeah actually um to touch on that i don't think that the kirby game and this fire emblem game are really comparable because fire emblem you pay 40 bucks and then you have to pay 45 bucks to get the rest of the dlc that's 85 dollars just to get the full game whereas with kirby it's free and you can beat the game without spending a dime although it'd be pretty tough as you know both both you and i are finding out we need more gem apples please you know and so you know yeah we we chip in a few a few bucks to get some more gem apples because we think it's worth it and we think the game is worth it and we want and we don't want to just be endlessly grinding right but you know i think the the cardinal sin with this is as you mentioned it just seems to be like they're pulling an Activision or they're pulling an EA games or a Rockstar games, you know, all of those, all of those companies and all of those strategies, which people just loathe and hate, Nintendo is starting to, to implement. Now, before we get carried away with this, I do want to know this, this is only one game and it is for a wildly popular series, although it's more popular in Japan than it is in the States. Um, and can I also mention, just because I don't think this can go unaddressed on my part in a Fire Emblem video, what I find interesting about all of this is that Fire Emblem used to be a very, 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 how many times can I say very, niche series with not that much appeal outside of Japan. And it was very hard to get your hands on copies in the States. Somewhat right? like the Monster Hunter of today. Yeah, kind of like that, sort of. Although I think Monster Hunter is enjoying much more comparative popularity to when the Fire Emblem games were around. But they're still um, very much limited to Japanese audiences. Yeah, they're still very much catering to J Japanese audiences. We're literally just getting a game that Japan has already had for a year, I think, at this point, right? No, but getting back to my original point, you know, as a... And I this is going to be a, a can of worms opening because... Um, I like doing that sometimes, but as a Metroid fan, 
I can't, and you're a Metroid fan as well. Oh, yes. I am just kind of dismayed at all of the fantastic treatment that Fire Emblem is getting because they used to be, like Metroid, a very niche appeal series. And all of a sudden, Nintendo thought it was a great idea to really market it a lot more, put a ton of Fire Emblem characters in Smash way more than they need to. Still, still salty, reeling and salt over Corrin getting included. Um, you know, like, Nintendo is showering all of this intention and resources on Fire Emblem, where series like that have been dormant for decades Metroid. or for over a decade, like Metroid or um, F Zero, right? They get nothing, right? And I mean, Metroid got Federation Force, but I'm not going to open that many cans of worms in this episode. <laughs> You know, that's all. That deserves a whole other episode. If we wanted to talk about Federation Force. But we both played um, that game, and we both have our own opinions on it. And yeah, we we played through it. We actually bought it. We played through it, and we both both thought it was a pretty good game, although it was not marketed well, and um, came at a pretty came at a pretty bad time for the Metroid series. But I digress. The point is, is that Nintendo is giving Fire Emblem the rock star treatment. Um, pun not intended. <laughs> Nintendo's giving them the Rockstar treatment, releasing tons of games, they're getting a mobile game, and now they're even getting the direct path to DLC on, on the scale of Call of Duty, right? Like, for me, it just leaves kind of a sour taste in my mouth. Now, I know there's a lot of Fire Emblem fans out there, I know that we're probably gonna get maybe some nasty comments from people, like, you know, are you kidding me? This is the best thing ever, you know? I love Fire Emblem. I love my anime waifus, you know? And I get that, okay? I get that. Like, I'm not really criticizing the games of the game series themselves. I haven't played a Fire Emblem game. The closest I've come to playing a Fire Emblem game is I played a game by the same developer called Codename Steam. And that was pretty fun. Um, although Kai and I both, difficult. Kai and I both, you know, think it's infuriatingly difficult, but it it was fun for what it was, right? No, I'm not as much criticizing that as I'm criticizing and afraid of Nintendo's treatment of franchises that I enjoy, like F-Zero and Metroid, in comparison to Fire Emblem. Now, hopefully, Metroid will get a Fire Emblem treatment someday. Um, F-Zero, I mean, it'd be cool if they came back, but with Mario Kart literally getting, you know, the ability to have Captain Falcon with an amiibo and the F-Zero courses, I think there might be only one F-Zero course. You know, but I think Mario Kart has kind of eclipsed the need for F Zero at least for now. Although I think it would be really cool to have some sort of F Zero game and have it come back some way. But no, I'm just I'm not a fan of this decision. I mean, to be fair, it's a ton of content. Like it's all new maps, all new chapters to the story. You know, it, it is a lot of content. But is it worth such a big price tag? Like, why did you have to do that? There's no doubt that, that there's no doubt that it's worth the price tag for dedicated Fire Emblem fans. I have no doubt about that. The only thing that I the, but but again, I have to go back to the fact that it that it is promoting business strategy, like the uh, faulty business strategies. And it's not to say yeah. that no one's going to buy this because that's actually part of the problem. People are going to buy this. People are going to spend their money on this because it's such a popular series, right? And I do like the Fire Emblem series, right? Um, the thing with it though is that. It makes it very hard to get into Fire Emblem when the barrier to entry is having to pay an equally large price tag for DLC as you did pay for the game. Mm -hmm. That to me seems not only, you know, financially difficult to pull off, but also to, to, to justify, but also, you know, it's almost, it's almost like, why are you even bothering releasing the game when you could just release the DLC as a separate title and charge us for that. I mean, I don't really see... Yeah, I can kind of see that. I don't really see why they should charge you 50 bucks for DLC that is, you know... And, and I'm sure it's going to be great DLC, but the, the term DLC to me, it sparks a great deal of concern because I know what DLC entails... And although Nintendo hasn't stooped to the lows of so many developers in 2016 who, who made this error, and in 2015 who made this error, 
it's on the horizon. And that is that they're going to, I hope they will not, but I see that they could in the future say that they're going to, you know, release games and then suggest people pre-order the game so that they can have access to the DLC. That's the I mean, next. imagine, oh, ooh, a shiver just got, went down my spine at this thought. Imagine if they pull some of this with um, Super Mario Odyssey. Like, you want to go explore New York? Well, buy the $5 DLC, you know? Oh, you want to go explore, you know, the Sahara Desert? Guess what? Another $5 DLC. You know, what if they pull that with, like, some of their main series? That'd be amazing. Like, maybe even more main series, like Mario and Pokemon, for example. That's kind of what we are being what kaiju and i are being disconcerted by is they might start doing this with other series as well i I don't foresee that happening in mario odyssey where i foresee it happening is in some of their lesser series and what i what i see not so much the dlc part of buying the dlc after you've got the game what i deeply 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 fear is pre-order the game so that you can get the dlc that's yeah. the cardinal sin that I think is going to be the most poignant and the most injurious. Making us pay for DLC is actually not something that I greatly fear. It's the it's the No, I mean they handled it pretty well in Smash, it. right? Yeah, and I like heard oh, many... we're releasing we're releasing Roy and Mewtwo and Ryu and Cloud and Bayonetta, the last two we are both still salty over. Um but you can buy those characters for what, four ninety nine, five ninety nine, and they're not gonna significantly detract from your overall game experience, right? They're just if you if you're a dedicated fan, you'll buy it and it's a reasonable price tag, right? You know, or all the extra skins or all the extra outfits and stages that you can buy, like for, for Smash. Like again, you, you get a full game experience without the DLC and those extra characters, Lucas, etc., you feel free to buy for a pretty reasonable price. And but I this new Fire Emblem DLC is going in a different direction, which is pay a somewhat ridiculous price tag for DLC, which is almost needed to have a full game experience. Correct. And what I was saying was that there – see, what seems to me and what I've heard so many YouTubers say – when they're talking about pre-orders and how disappointing they are with the pre-orders, right? Because I could go on and on. I could I could list so many different games that were released in 2016 and 2015 that made the promise of purchase early and you'll get some DLC that were complete and total flops, right? Yeah. And mm-hmm. what has been the ubiquitous comment from people who say that is there's, there's a big community out there that's saying do not pre-order games and the one caveat that they always make to that statement is don't pre-order games unless they're from nintendo because nintendo has the reputation still has the reputation this this dlc doesn't hinder that i'm saying that it could in the future lead to something that would be congruous to making you buy purchase early to get dlc but nintendo has the reputation of only releasing high quality complete games they don't release mm-hmm. games that are incomplete they don't promise uh, anything special for pre-orders right yeah they're not going to upsell you after you buy into the game either and so that's why they're always able to make the to say the caveat of if microsoft if square enix if any of these companies release a game and say that you need to pre-order it to unlock something do not pre-order it because we want to discourage that sort of behavior the caveat mm-hmm. is Nintendo. You may pre-order from Nintendo because they're going to release a full game, right? So that's yeah. why, you know, when it came to Sun and Moon, the date was open. Pre-order away because there's not there's no promise of getting anything special other than Snorlium Z, but that barely counts because you could still get it after the game was released. You, you could get it within a month of buying the game, I think. Yeah, I, I, I bought the game in January, and I still got Snorlium Z. So there's yeah. nothing... Yeah, and the game was released in November. So there's absolutely nothing that bars... That, uh, that was barring and that you could not get if you didn't pre-order. So this right. is the sort of behavior that I think is a logical progression so if nintendo continues with these sorts of behaviors this is where they're going to end up and i fear that so although innately this dlc it's somewhat of a hefty price tag i think 
is not it, it I can see why they're doing it and it, and I guess I'm willing to accept it. I just fear the ramifications of them continuing this behavior. Definitely. 